Hello again, this is uh, video 13. Uh, this is our first uh, After Effects video in my series on uh, how to composite using Maya, Mental Ray, After Effects, and Photoshop. Uh, what I've got here now is a whole bunch of completed renders, and uh, what I want to do is I want to bring them into an After Effects document and uh, get started with my compositing. So, uh, you know, let's go ahead and load some of these up. Uh, I'm going to use the renders for the uh, shot that we've been working with primarily, uh, this shot which I've kind of already got composited, and uh, I'll just kind of like take a look at uh, some of the parts of bringing it together. Uh, I'll look at some of the basics and then I'll jump to the final composite at the very end. So, um, you know, first up here, uh, what I want to do is I want to import my elements into After Effects. And in my project window on the left, here's where I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, I'll just right click and choose Import and uh, choose File. Now uh, I'm keeping all my shot elements together here. Uh, first off, I have my, uh, my master layers. These are all my background images. And uh, I'm just going to select all of these and bring them in. Uh, I have my fill, direct irradiance, my flat color, my indirect, my master beauty, my reflection, my specular. So let me select all of these and hit open. Uh, none of these have an alpha channel, so uh, it always asks me what to do when I'm bringing in a, a TIFF or a Targo, which has the capability of storing an alpha channel. Uh, in this case, it doesn't matter if I choose ignore or straight unmatted. Uh, I'm actually just going to choose ignore because there's really no alpha here anyway. So each of these will just get ignored. Because sometimes the names get pretty long, I like to uh, rename these images. Uh, this one is going to be renamed Direct. Uh, this one is going to be renamed Flat Color. I'm just pretty much taking off the prefix and suffix here. Uh, this is my Indirect. Here is my Master. Here is my Reflections. And here is my Specular. So I've got pretty much all of these parts in. Um, I'm going to group these, uh, put a new uh, folder here, which I can choose the folder icon at the bottom of my project window to create a new folder. Uh, I'm just going to call this background or BG and just put all of these images in a little background folder that I can kind of keep everything uh, together. Uh, next up, I want to bring in some of my foreground images. So I'll go to import file uh, here. Uh, I'll go back. I've got my ambient occlusion images. Now this is a whole image sequence because I was rendering out frame 46 through frame 570. So I'd choose the first one. If you've only got one image in these other images, you can just bring in a single image. But uh, I have a full uh, image sequence. Uh, I'm going to leave the TIFF sequence button checked in this case. And I'll say open. Now it's asking me what I want to do here with my ambient occlusion image. And again, there's no alpha for me to use here. Uh, this is pretty much uh, solid uh, all the way through, so I'll just ignore any alpha that's embedded. And uh, I'll rename this AO. So I've got uh, you know this footage here, which we can see is kind of played all the way through as my occlusion image. Uh, what else do we have? I'll import some other elements here. Uh, let's see, I've got my main character. And uh, I've got several different render passes here for the main character. Uh, although for this tutorial, I'm just going to stick to some of the basics. Uh, for instance, I have my Master Beauty here, which is uh, frame 46 through 570. This is also a TIFF sequence, and I'm going to open this. Now this time around, I do have an alpha channel, because it's just the character that I'm going to be using. Uh, so my alpha is going to come in straight unmatted, and I'm going to say OK. Uh, here, I'm going to rename this as like foreground master. You know, see if I double click this, it's really just the main character is what I'm using. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, import file again and uh, let's see what else do I need. Uh, let's also grab, I have like my flat color pass, um, a couple other ones, my specular pass as well, but I'm also just going to grab my direct irradiance pass for my main character in the foreground. Again, TIFF sequence, again I want to keep my alpha in this case. Uh, I'm going to rename this one uh, foreground direct, and that one looks like this. It's pretty much just the direct illumination on the character, none of the uh, textural elements. Uh, I sometimes like to multiply this on for effect. Uh, what else do I have here in file? Uh, I'm going to go to my shadow cast. 
uh, which I previously created. This is also a TIFF sequence. I'll open this. Uh, this one, I'm going to ignore any alpha channel, and I'll show you what happens here. Uh, this will just make the whole image all white with just my shadow. Uh, I'm going to rename this one uh, Foreground Shadow. And I should just have uh, one more set of images here. I've got my Reflections Pass as well. Uh, I'm going to grab this. I've got my whole image sequence. I'll say Open. Uh, I am going to keep my alpha this time. Um, it's going to come in straight unmatted. That's really just my reflection here of that little um, window reflection element. Again, probably pretty hard to see in the video, but it's uh, this little arm right there. Uh, I'm going to rename this as uh, foreground reflection. And uh, I pretty much have all of my elements in here now. Now, one thing about uh, doing my compositing is uh, I want to make sure I'm using a 32-bit uh, image or 32-bit um, project. Uh, I do this by uh, clicking on what says 8BPC in the bottom of my project window. That's 8 bits per channel. If I click on that, I can change my color settings depth from 8-bit per channel to 32-bit per channel. And uh, I'm just going to say OK to save that. I also am uh, I'm 24 frames per second. That's how I was rendering out of Maya. So I'm making sure my time code base is set to uh, 24 and maybe not 30. Depending on what you're using, though, you may want to make sure that your After Effects project is set to the same settings as what you were rendering in Maya. But uh, again, I'm time code base, 24 FPS. My depth is 32-bit per channel. Uh, to illustrate uh, really kind of what's going on here with the 32-bit per channel, uh, I actually want to use uh, Photoshop. And uh, I'm going to take a um, base image here, just like the completed final render of this, and uh, demonstrate kind of like what can happen with an 8-bit image. This is uh, image mode 8-bit. Eventually, your, your files will come back to being 8-bit, but while you're working with them, you want to make sure you have the 32-bit capabilities. Uh, you can see this pretty easily sometimes if you go into like your levels. Uh, you start to notice like artifacting. Uh, you can sometimes notice it when you're adjusting your levels. Uh, sort of like color burn, that's a little weird. Uh, if I go into uh, adjustments and try my exposure, I might notice very similar sort of things that... Uh, I lose some of the uh, color capabilities. Uh, sometimes if you push your hue and saturation too far, this is when you really start to notice that artifacting. Uh, again, if I take my lightness and adjust my lightness, you might notice it a bit. So, you know, working with 8-bit images, uh, you can sometimes get everything that you need, but uh, I prefer to work with 32-bit images when I can. Uh, also in Maya, I might as well uh, open back up Maya real quick and talk about some render settings here. Uh, I rendered out some of my images as 32-bit images in Maya, and uh, this just allows me to have an extra sort of element of exposure control. Uh, for instance, my background master image was rendered out 32-bit so I could kind of control the exposure here and post a little bit better without blowing it out. Uh, in Maya what you can do if you want to render out 32-bit is in your render settings uh, for mental ray which I just have to uh, make sure is loaded here real quick. Uh, da -da -da. Maya 2 MR and my plugin manager will load that. Uh, I'm gonna go to mental ray uh, I can switch in my quality tab in my render settings from the native uh, under frame buffer from the native data type of RGBA 4 by 8 bit. That's uh, all four channels being 8 bit, the red, green, blue, and alpha channel being 8 bit. I can switch this to uh, RGBA float 4 by 32 bit. And what that means is each of your channels, uh, the red, green, and blue, are each capable of having 32 bits of information per single byte. Uh, and that extra amount of information can control things like exposure, uh, extra lighting information that gets baked into the pixels. Uh, so this is something that I might oftentimes do. Uh, render that out uh, RGB 8-bit. I'll show you kind of how this comes together in a few minutes here in uh, After Effects. But uh, I've pretty much got everything set up and my composition elements imported. Uh, lastly, I have to create my base composition. The easiest way to do this is to just kind of take, um, 
you know, one of your elements, one of your render elements, and just drag them down into the timeline. And that's instantly going to create a uh, composition for you. If I go to my composition settings, right click there, I'll be able to see that my width and height will now match up. It's 1920 by 1080, that's uh, 1080p. Uh, my aspect ratio is 16 by 9. Uh, my preset is HDTV, 24 frames per second. Again, I've got my square pixels. Here's my 24 frames per second. My time code start is at zero frames, and the duration is for six frames. That may not be as long as I need, but I can change that duration later on if I need to extend that out. Uh, so if my duration of my timeline is, uh, I don't know, uh, 15 seconds long, uh, I can say OK, and now I'm going to have a 15 second long timeline that I can utilize for my frames. So uh, this is the start. This is how you can get your elements imported into After Effects. Um, again, I think the, the big thing to understand is which uh, images you need to bring in are sequences versus stills, and also uh, understanding which images uh, need their alpha channel and which do not. Uh, and in general, if you need to cut out a foreground element, it probably needs its alpha channel. When in doubt, just say straight unmatted when you're importing, uh, unless you're getting uh, an effect that you don't want. But uh, most of the time, I would say straight unmatted. Uh, so this has been video 13 about uh, getting things into After Effects. Uh, what I want to do in the next video, video 14, is uh, get started with some of this compositing. So see you in video 14.